make an awkward transition into our sponsor for this video. One in one internet services. One in one allows you the best website plug and play apps for your website or a virtual server for hardcore hosting. Whatever you need, one in one has you covered. In fact, they offer a 100% money back guarantee during the first 30 days. I use them and love their 24 7 support via phone, Twitter, and email options. Check the link down below for more information. Hey guys, welcome to another Wolfboy video. My name is Joe Wolfboy. So, today we are actually going to tear down kind of my grandfather's Dell Inspiron 660S. Now, the reason behind this is because it is running slow as dirt with its Celeron processor. You can see right there. Um, and I want to see if it can be upgraded to the um, i3. So, if uh, this video actually... Um, fails I'll still upload it because I think that it's a great concept to see someone tear down the system and get a first hand look at it even though this is an older system some technician out there may actually have the system in their uh, plethora of systems that they need to work on so first of all already the thumb screws are already out in the back of the system so you'd actually find those one here and then one here so we're just going to simply remove the side panel and that then just literally pretty much falls off. Now, here you're going to actually want to do uh, two separate things. First of all, I personally like removing these clips um, and moving, removing the front panel because um, you're going to actually want to get to this hard drive cage so that you can e more easily um, take out the... Uh, the uh, this base so that you can easier you can more easily get to this fan section so again those clips are here and here and here and once the front panels off again these clips are here here and here and again the panel just slips in and out like so so I am sorry for the bad angle if you guys can't see so yeah I'm just going to go ahead and lay it back down, and it looks like the CPU is actually on two separate mechanisms. Yep. So, behind these fans that Dell has, there's always a few different clips, so be careful. When you reach back down here, you'll feel the clips. Just simply pull up on them, and... There's usually one on every side, but I didn't feel one on that side, so. Yeah. Okay, so we actually got that loosened and I'm gonna just kind of jimmy this one off. There we go. And you'll see that it's held by pins on these adjacent sides, and then you'll see the actual clips. And I'll try and zoom in for you guys. I'm not sure how well you guys can see those, but you can actually see the pin, and then I just focus the camera there. Yeah, you'll see the pin, and then the clip. Again, the pin is on the two adjacent sides, and then the clips are on all four corners. Let me go ahead and focus back into the computer. So again, I'm just kind of laying everything off the side. Now I am being a very bad technician and not having an anti-static um, mat that I can stand on, but I do have a solid surface that I can stand on while I'm working. So always never use a magnetic tip. Always use a standard tip whenever you're working with electronics. Personally, I don't care if it's um, directly on the motherboard or not. Always use the uh, the standard tips. Now, so a step that I actually almost forgot. Um, go ahead and disconnect your power. Uh, so you want to connect, disconnect your four pin and your twenty or twenty four, uh, twenty plus four pin. So for this, you'll actually have to remove uh, this bracket here to get to your twenty or twenty plus four pin connector. Now, I'm also being a bad technician here and getting in the way of the camera. 
Um, but also, I'm not using the, uh, like, a screw holder, which I'd actually highly recommend because it's a lot it's a lot easier when you're um, getting your screws all in place because um, you can already see that there's two or three different types of screws laying there and not always will you be able to remember which uh, types of screws go where. So I'm just going to remove these three screws. Now to remove this bracket you have again three screws. One screw connected to the power supply, one screw on the front, and one screw on the front near the power button. Then you're going to lift directly straight up. Be careful not to bend any of the connectors. If you bend the connectors, that's bad, and you're going to end up having a headache when you're done with it. So just go ahead and lightly take those out, and you'll notice your hard drive cage on the bottom with your hard drive in it. I'm pretty sure this is a 500 gigabyte. Um, I believe it is a Western Digital Black inside there. Um, could be wrong there. Um, and then just a standard DVD ROM drive here. So go ahead and set this off to the side. Again, I'd recommend having a full anti-static workspace while you're doing this. Now here is where you're going to end up disconnecting your 20, I believe, not 20 plus 4, or maybe it is a 20 plus 4, I'm not 100% certain, but you're going to disconnect the main motherboard power right here. Now, it may take a little bit of force, so don't be afraid if you have to pull a little hard to get it out. So once it's out, go ahead and just, I always make sure that none of the pins were shaken loose. You should always have the one empty pin, which should be between the red and the black. So go ahead and kind of shift all the cables over so you can kind of do cable management as you go because the worst thing is to have cables in your face while you're working. All right, now, because we're going to be taking up this fan header, you're going to want to take off your um, CPU fan header cable, which I believe, yes, is actually clipped into place. So for this, you'll actually, if you have a multi-head screwdriver, quickly switch to your smallest uh, flat head that you have and just go ahead and go ham on that. First thing, I have two separate ones, the long one and the small one. I'm going to try both because I'm not sure which it will work. So I'm actually going to try the small one first. And this is the three-fourths uh, flat head. I'm just going to pop that in and pull back the pin slightly so that you can lift out your wonderful, glorious fan header over here. Yeah. So now that the fan header is removed, go ahead and switch back to your Phillips head, which I have two. I'm using the Phillips P1 head, simply because that's what is available to me. Um, I'm not sure what um, ones would be available to you. Now you do have to be careful because these are kind of at an angle due to the weird positioning of the fan. Now, as always, thanks to Linus Tech Tips, I've finally understood that you should always um, screw adjacent, or unscrew adjacent, whichever you're doing at said time. So just go ahead and unbolt the adjacent sides. And you'll hear a popping sound when it's, a, when it's done and ready to come out. So,
Alright. So it's not actually all the way out yet. Just going to keep loosening up. And then once it's finally ready, there's actually enough thermal paste on this that I would not need thermal paste. However, I'd always recommend switching out the thermal paste. So here I'm actually going to grab the camera from the tripod so you guys can see the CPU process a little bit better. So here you have your CPU and to um, completely remove it, you're going to want to press down on the retention arm, pull it out slightly, lift up, and then lift the shield back. Then you'll want to gently, on the corners, lift out on the CPU. Now, because this is a Intel processor, if you touch the back, it, <laughs> it could damage it. However, it's not like an AMD processor that has the pins. So, yeah, we're actually going to go ahead and wipe this off real fast, and I'm going to be right back. All right, so after discharging myself on the power supply, the electrical screws on the light, and also the metal tripod I'm using, I am going to go ahead and pick this back up so I can show you guys what I found. So this is an Intel Celeron. And this is a uh, G465. So what that may mean to you, or what it may not mean to you, um, is the fact that it is a Sandy Bridge processor. So what this means is that I can purchase any processor in the Sandy Bridge um, sector that um, can I can upgrade. So, again, I'll probably end up just getting a, a cheap i3. Um, and then replace that. So I'm going to make a separate video of me actually replacing this. This was just the research stage. So, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. But before I leave you guys, I'm actually going to do a quick run through of how to re uh, reinstall everything. So this is actually going to be a time lapse of me reinstalling everything. All of this is actually being recorded on my iPhone 5 um, before I get my 6S or 6S Plus. I'm still at the time of this recording debating which one it'll be. So go ahead, sit back and enjoy the music. <laughs> Well, while we're here, rating would be much appreciated if you enjoyed or if you didn't. If you have a comment, let us hear it down below. And while you're down there, be sure to smack the subscribe button for more videos like this one. Now that you're done with this video, however, you're probably wondering what to watch next, so click the little eye up in the corner uh, to see popular video suggestions. Also, if you like the content, please consider supporting us by changing your eBay, Newegg, and Amazon links to ones with our affiliate codes. Uh, by buying a t-shirt, unlike this one, um, or even by donating to us directly, all of which are linked down below. So I'm going to thank you all again for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye